Hello again, everybody, and thanks again for all of your support. I'll try and pay you guys back by delivering good video material, and I'd even make out with you if you just supply me with your home address and a good time for me to stop by. So in this two-part video lesson series, we will be demonstrating how to design and then program elite custom form fields. Dare I even say epic form fields? And I have to say epic because that gives the little kids here on YouTube a chubby, so I gotta throw that in. Before we begin, let's take a look at what we're going to be creating from scratch so we all have a very clear idea of our objective and our end result. If you go to the YouTube channels, if you see somebody with a new YouTube layout, with the new channel layout, uh, mine has it if you want to just go to mine, you put your mouse inside of this search field, you can see how it looks in its normal state. You can see how the button reacts when you mouse over it. And when you focus in the search field, it changes to a different kind of look and feel. It gets a little darker. It's very simple to create graphics like this. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to show you how to go into a graphics editing program and create graphics like this. There's also a, uh, an example at develop PHP up at the top here. I have my own little custom search bar. Okay? So that's the kind of thing we're going to be making. Custom search bar and really you can make any field in your forms. Let's say you have a sign up form you can do this to your sign up form fields, okay? You can do this to your contact form fields in HTML, whatever you want. You can really get creative and design any type of form field for user data intake. Okay, so in this first video, we're going to design the button and the field. And then in the second video, we're going to do the programming to bring it all to life. And it's all very simple programming. It's any anybody just starting out could probably fathom all of what we're going to be doing. Now, I'm working in Fireworks CS5, but it really doesn't matter what graphics editing tool you want to use. You can be in Photoshop, Illustrator, GIMP, Paint, I don't even care. As long as you're good in that program at doing what you so you can render things correctly. If you want to use Fireworks and follow my steps exactly, that's cool too. Okay, open up a new document in your graphics editing software. Make it whatever size you want to make it. I'm going to make mine 1200 by 500. Let me bring up my little properties bar here. Maybe I'll make my canvas just a little lighter than that. Yours might start white. But if you want to follow my steps exactly, you can just make it a dark gray like that. Now it's important to keep in mind you can make these any size you need them. And then once we get into the programming part in the HTML and CSS, we pad it to move the field around the cursor to place it anywhere we need to inside that field. So I'm going to start anywhere I want to here and just draw out a rectangle that is about that long. I'm going to make it 24, actually I'll make mine a little bit bigger, maybe 30 high and 250 wide. Now if you want those tooltips like I do, you can go to view tooltips and then you'll see those little numbers as you're dragging. You see the nice little numbers? Let's also draw out another rectangle while we're at it. Make that one the same height, 30, and just make it 30 by 30. Actually make it a little wider than 30. Make it about 36 by 30. But really, you can make these any size you want. You can really customize them to look any way you want. You can tell that the one at Develop PHP is nice and big and fat. The one at YouTube is really, really small and skinny. All right, so what I'm going to do is highlight this big one first. I'm going to move it away from that other one. I'm going to highlight that one, and I'm going to give it a roundness. Let's take a look at that. That looks perfect. So it has a roundness of 35. Let's see if I round this out to 35 if it's kind of equal it might round it more because it's smaller. No, that looks about right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is grab out another rectangle shape, a little one, and I'm going to draw it over here, over this guy, so I can cut off his end. You see his curved end? I'm going to put a rectangle over it, and I'm going to cut it off. And I'm also going to put a rectangle over this one and cut that off as well, so they both have flat ends. Okay, and I'll even make these different colors so you guys can see what's going on real well. Let's make them that pink or whatever. So I'm going to highlight this one, this pink bar, and this little guy over here together by holding shift as I highlight them. And then I'm going to go to modify, combine paths, and punch. And then this one I'm going to do the same thing. Highlight the pink bar, then highlight this orange bar, and then I'm going to go to modify, combine paths, and punch. Okay, with this shape highlighted, let's change its fill color to a gray like that. Now, I'm going to give it an edge of a lighter gray, kind of like that. Now I'm going to highlight again and I'm going to filters now. I'm going to give it an inner shadow. 
coming from the top. And right when you do that, you can already instantly see the emboss effect or the inlaid effect that it has. But let's go in and make it a little more, you know, not so blurred, so it's a little tighter in there. So we can highlight that, go to the inner shadow, make it something like, I don't know, three, and then bring this down to two or one if you want, and then take a look at what you got. Now that looks like a really smooth, slick, 3D inlaid search field, just like the one at YouTube or Develop PHP. Now you take this and you slide it over, right over the top of that bright line, and then you make sure, you can even zoom in by holding control, you make sure that this guy's tall enough to cover both of those lines, this and this. You see mine is not tall enough, it needs to be two pixels higher, so I'm going to go 32 on that. All right. Now everything matches up real nice. I'm going to work on this button now. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to go to gradient. I'm going to give it a linear gradient. And on the top, we're going to make it maybe this color gray. Maybe even a little darker like that. And then total black on the bottom. And you can make yours lighter. Any shade that you want It's just fine. Now the rest is very simple. You just grab whatever you created there by highlighting everything. Press Control C, Control V, make another copy, bring it down just a little bit. And this one you want to make a little bit darker. So I'm going to go to its fill color, go into the color palette, and just drag it down to be darker. So that's what it's going to look like when the person focuses their mouse in the field. Now, before it gets focused on, you want to have some text in here. So you can just type in, holy crap, that's huge. That's too big. 110. Okay, let's go down to 12, maybe? Yeah, 12 looks good. And don't make it so bright. No, not that dark. Eh, a little bit lighter than that. Uh, let's go right here. Okay, now I'm going to type in search website. And then you just move that into place where you want it. Let's move it over just a touch. Right there. Now, what I'm going to do is draw out a donut. So I'm going to go into shapes, grab a donut, and I'm going to try my best to mimic the one that uh, YouTube has. Let's do something like that. And then I can just take my pen tool and go right about here to there to there to right about there and then close off that shape. And then I'm highlight both of them together and I'll go to modify, combine paths, and I'll union them this time. So I'll have one shape. Okay, now I can go ahead and shrink that down, scale it down, put it where it's going to go. You can zoom in by holding control and then mouse wheeling, and then you can scale some more. That looks good. Put it into place, and then make that one a little bit darker, and then the one here, we're going to make a little bit light. So let's just control C, control V, make a copy, drag it down. Once it looks like it's in place real good, you keep that one light and then just make this one a little bit darker. Very simple. Maybe a little darker than that. There you go. Now zoom out to 100% and that's what you got. You can make that any size, any shape you want. So when the user's mouse is nowhere near this field, it's going to look like this version on top. And when the user's mouse goes into the field, to start typing, this version of the graphics for the field comes into play on the focus event. And when their mouse mouses over this button here, it's going to change to this state. All right, so that's pretty much everything we need. And these are going to be separate little pieces in our graphics export. So what we're going to do now is export each one of these four pieces as its own little individual PNG file. So I'm going to press Control C with that highlighted and then I'm going to go to File, New and in Fireworks it'll have the exact dimensions of what I have in my clipboard already in the width and height there so that's good but you would set yours to those exact dimensions for that shape. So once in what I'm going to do is go to Canvas, No Canvas Color so we have no background and then we just paste that right in make sure everything is fit into the canvas well okay and then we file export wizard continue continue and then exit and then you go to PNG up here 32 make sure your mat is none 
and then make sure you have PNG selected here before you press export and you'll know by what's set here so you export and now I'm just gonna make a folder on my desktop so let's go to desktop new folder let's call it my website doesn't matter now I'll double click inside of it and let's see I'll just put everything actually I'll lay it out like it was your website you would have an images folder in your website directory right just like you have your style folder and all that stuff images folder let's put them all in there so you put them all in your images folder for your website all of these graphics that we're creating right now and we're gonna name this one SB norm it's search actually search field so SF norm that stands for search field normal it's in its normal state save so now you have a PNG with no background for the normal state of your field now what you're gonna do is the same exact process for these other three items okay you see what I'm exporting now it's the dark version of that so I'm gonna call it SF lit even though it is darker or let's call it focus that makes more sense SF focus because that's actually the HTML event attribute that we're going to access to change it so let's press save now that one's in there now I've got my little button here and I remove those fields and I can just go down to fit canvas and it'll be a nice perfect snug fit and I go to file export same thing continue continue exit PNG 32 mat none make sure we're on PNG export and let's call this SB for search button norm save let's remove that one control X let's go over here and grab this one control C and put it right there into place make sure we fit canvas to make sure it's all nice and snug in the canvas and file export continue continue exit PNG 32 nomad export and then this one SB over and we're gonna call it over because we're gonna be accessing the HTML mouse over event the on mouse over save okay in this I don't need to save that file at all and this file you'll definitely want to save this one you're working on with your raw graphics you want to save this as my search field raw graphics PNG so it's an editable PNG or whatever graphics software you're in if you're in Photoshop Illustrator save your raw file so you can do changes later if you need to okay so if you want to see how I bring these graphic elements to life using HTML CSS and JavaScript to make them just like develop PHP's or like YouTube's or whatever or like anybody else's we'll be covering that in the very next video for this one we showed you how to make all the graphics the next one we will show you how to program these things to bring it all to life